Hello, David Hopewell from Gwyneth Archaeological Trust here again. Uh, this is the second uh, lecture in a sh short series of um, informal lectures looking at the work of the Trust. Uh, I've been working on Roman projects um, over the last well, quite a long time. Uh, this is the second lecture and we're looking at uh, the Roman Fort Environs Project, which is where we started off with our studies of uh, uh, Roman Gwyneth. Um, I'm a senior archaeologist at Gwyneth Archaeological Trust. Uh, you can find out more at www.henev.co.uk. Uh, in the first lecture, we looked at uh, the invasion of North Wales through, pretty much through the writings of Roman writer Tacitus and uh, looked at uh, a timeline. So this time, from now on, we're going to kind of focus on the... Uh, on Gwyneth Archaeological Trust's uh, projects uh, and uh, so we're starting off with the Roman Fort Environs project. A bit of background, this was a project that was part of our CADU grant aided program of work and it's really classed as a scheduling enhancement project so we're looking at ways of uh, getting further information about uh, sites of national importance and uh, seeing if we can increase their protection if necessary. Um, feel like a bit of a fraud. We're saying that this is the um, recent work of Gwyneth Archaeological Trust. I was somewhat horrified to realise that we actually started this project 21 years ago in 1999, uh, but kept it, and kept it going on in little dribs and drabs until quite recently. Um, it's all been published, um, it's appeared in a couple of places. The initial um, paper was in Britannia in 2005, Roman Fort Environs in Northwest Wales. But uh, one of the other products of, the, of, the, of our Roman and other people's Roman uh, projects is a, a book put out by the Royal Commission on the Ancient and Historic Monuments of Wales historical monuments of Wales, I should say, uh, called Roman Frontiers in Wales and the Marches. So we're looking at uh, Rome, the Roman forts in North Wales uh, that were set up after uh, the invasion of Agricola. Uh, the slide shows a, a map of, of, of the forts that we know about and the roads. Um, these are all auxiliary forts their base is for auxiliary troops they're not Roman citizens they were recruited from the provinces the exact numbers of troops in the forts are not that easy to determine but it's probably looking at five or six hundred but many of these might be deployed on duty away from the base uh, most of them initially had turf and timber ramparts and timber buildings and then some were built rebuilt in stone but they're all much pretty much uh, built to a standard plan now the reason why we wanted to look at Roman forts is as part of our scheduled enhancement program was uh, the scheduled area, i.e. the protected area around the forts tended to be uh, a, a very handy, handy uh, playing card shaped area of protection and not really looking at what was known outside the fort. And we know from other places in the world and indeed within the, uh, the local area that the fort was really the centre of a um, a wider landscape, which well, there was a lot of things going on in the landscape around the fort that was associated with it. This slide here is a an aerial photograph of Canovium in the uh, Conway Valley, I think taken by, by J.K. St. Joseph from Cambridge. Um, it's... This gives us an idea of, the, of a Roman fort sitting in its uh, wider landscape. So we have the fort at the bottom uh, and uh, to the top we can see a Roman road with little plots alongside it and, poss and possibly some buildings. Uh, to the, on the right of the fort we've got a bathhouse and uh, we can see roads going off in various directions. So this is the kind of thing we might be expecting around all Roman forts in, uh, in, uh, in North Wales and beyond, obviously. Uh, 
the ideal thing for looking at these kind of things without digging lots of holes is using geophysical survey. So what we've been using are flux gate gradiometers, kind of magnetometer. I'm not going to go into the details of how these work. That's what Google's for. Uh, we've gone, got through uh, two generations of, of machines while this was a uh, while this pro uh, project was going on. Uh, the latter one is a, a lot quicker and a lot easier to set up. So, the surveys. Uh, the first one, uh, the first site that we looked at was a trial. Uh, this was the one that was going to make or break the project, see if it actually came up with some useful information. So this one is at uh, Penal, which is right down near Macunthleth, at the very south of Gwynedd. As you can see from the aerial photograph here, there's not much of a clue as in, in the landscape as to where even where the fort is, let alone what's going on around it in the, in, uh, the wider landscape. Uh, this is uh, Nash Williams' uh, plan of it. So you could actually see in the, uh, in the slide a kink in the, in the hedge, which was one corner of the fort. Um, the uh, farm is actually within the fort itself. So we carried out quite an extensive survey here. So this was myself and John Berman. Um, and we've got, uh, I would say, a very uh, instructive, if not somewhat puzzling, set of results. So you can see in the centre of the slide uh, the, the fort itself. And then you can see another array of ditches outside the fort, which I think are probably uh, something are probably an earlier phase of fort, though we haven't really got any dating evidence. And then all around it, you can see there's things going on. My interpretation plan it probably helps a bit more here, so we can see the layout of the fort. And to the northeast, we can see a road running away from the fort with lots of rectangular buildings alongside it. We can see the same kind of thing to the northwest. Now, an interesting thing to spot on these uh, geophysical surveys are the uh, little dark blobs that we can see uh, alongside the road. Now, these are what we call a thermo remnant uh, feature. So, this is these are usually caused by a hearth. So, this would be the hearth within a building. Um, other things uh, on on the survey on the to the southwest, we, we have a bathhouse and a, I think what is a large courtyard building which is something called a mansia which is a kind of official inn and a little shrine number 28 right down the bottom there. If we look at this uh, reconstruction drawing uh, of, of the fort at Penal we'll have a look at a few of the major buildings and features of a fort just very quickly. Principia is the, the main administrative centre of the fort it has a sort of colonnaded parade ground in the front, a cross hall, and then a row of building, a row of rooms at the back, uh, including a shrine room. Inevitably, next to that is the Praetorium or the Commander's House. This is a sort of this is a courtyard house. Uh, they were still making uh, Mediterranean-style buildings, even in sunny North Wales. This central range of buildings in the fort, they, the other position can often be, can be taken up by several different types of building. It's not always that easy to under, uh, understand what they are from the geophys. Often you find a granary. Uh, granary is actually quite easy to, to spot in the geophysical survey. You also get things like hospitals and workshops and that kind of thing. Uh, the main road through uh, the centre of the fort is the Via Principalis, leading to the Porta Principalis uh, on, on either side, um, right and left. Um, and then the fort is divided up into uh, three ranges. So we've got the central range. In the front, we have the Praetentura, which in most cases contains barracks, which is what we're seeing here. These are these long buildings so this is where all the uh, troops are housed in the fort. And we, in the retentura at the back, we've got more barracks. So as we saw from the GFIs, there's bathhouse, a mansio, official inn, and the thing that we were looking for initially, which is the Vicus settlement. Now, a Vicus settlement is 
something that's found found outside almost all Roman forts. Uh, it's a sort of semi-civilian settlement, uh, with and in North Wales, this tends to consist of lots of uh, rectangular, small rectangular buildings, usually made of wood, with their end set end on to the roads out of the fort. Um, this functions are all kinds of things. I think the the it, initially it's sort of camp followers who came in with the with the army and then possibly people uh, from the local community uh, moving in there as, as over time. And so it's trading, um, craft working, sort of small in industrial stuff, uh, food and drink, and pro probably uh, houses of ill repute. So this is the kind of the high street outside the fort. Uh, at Penau, we, we did actually manage to have a look in detail at a bit of the Vicus. This is a, a geophysical survey of uh, of um, the settlement, and you can see in th these rectangular buildings quite clearly. Particularly the one in the at the bottom uh, left corner, very clear rectangular building with these blobs that, as, as I talked about before, which are the hearths within the building. Uh, we did a small excavation there which showed up a row of post holes which is easier to see on a plan you can see a row of post holes six seven eight nine ten which are so we had a, a sort of small aisled building there with a hearth in the middle a hearth very close to the post hole and so the one of the posts holding up the roof unsurprisingly it looked like the building burnt down we also saw uh, uncovered the Roman road, so this is a very typical Roman road with a sort of gravelly, stony surface. Um, so that was a success. Uh, it showed that the fort was actually within quite a large area of very important archaeology that needed um, protecting. So next we moved on to Kaya Gai. This is near Bala. So this is again built in the uh, late AD 70s we think. Um, this one is much more visible in the landscape. Uh, this is an aerial photograph of it. The the square field in front of the farmyard is actually the the ramparts of the fort. Uh, so actually the in this one the getting at and getting a good uh, survey of the fort itself was probably not going to be uh, a major outcome but you can actually even see the parch mark of the road coming out uh, to the right and if you look very closely in front of the uh, the, the square field you can just about make out the, the outline of uh, some buildings in that field. So this had all been spotted uh, quite a, uh, over the years so we could, we could actually see some of these uh, features and we could see that there was a and, and a shrine and a cemetery were discovered at various times. So this is our survey. Uh, this is my, I, I did most of this with uh, John Berman, but he carried out some of the high res stuff uh, uh, in front of the fort and got superb results. Um, what we can see again is that we have a, a great selection of uh, activity all, on pretty much all sides of the fort. Um, with the, the little blobs again in, in the geophysics showing where the hearths are within the buildings but we can see buildings and all kinds of things here. We can also see uh, the roads coming out of the fort and then uh, to the uh, south east of the fort we can see a big uh, anomaly uh, which a big, big strong anomaly which was uh, which is the result of the burning in the bathhouse and then beside that we can see a, a huge uh, courtyard building. So this is what we call, well, as far as we can tell, this is called a mansio. So we look, these are within an annex on the end of uh, uh, on the on the end of the fort. The mansio we think is an official inn. So this had um, administrative functions and was to do with the like Roman postal service and all that kind of stuff. But it, it's almost a quarter of the size of the fort, so it obviously shows its importance. After the forts, we think the forts have been abandoned. We seem to be picking up a bit of uh, Roman pottery that's that's later than that, and we're wondering if the Mancio in is ca carries on after the fort has been abandoned. So it's still carrying on administrative duties 
uh, even though the fort uh, has gone out of use. So here's the, uh, this is the interpretation plan. You can see um, we, we do seem to have a lot of activity around the fort. The, the Vicus uh, seems mostly to be on, on the north, uh, on the northeast, but there seems, there's quite a lot of activity. Not quite sure how to interpret it all uh, on the southwest. If we move on to Brina Gavalii, also known as Caetligui, this is near Capel Kirig. This was a slightly later fort, we think. Uh, for, we've got date, quite a lot of dating evidence from this. Uh, we think it was probably built in AD 90 or thereabouts. Again, not a lot to see from the air. Um, the, the, tree, the trees in the middle of the field there actually uh, uh, have some Roman remains in them that are still uncovered from excavations uh, way back in the 50s or 60s, I think it was. Uh, it was mostly excavated uh, by J.P. Hall in the 1920s and he picked up uh, the line of the ditches and it seemed to be a, a, a rather curiously um, a square fort with an annex uh, to the west. Our geophysical survey wasn't terribly clear but it did show us what was going on and, and why um, the fort looked a bit peculiar uh, from Hall's uh, trial trenching. Um, this is my um, interpretation diagram uh, and it shows that uh, we originally had a big playing card shaped fort so you can see the ditches at both ends, double ditches, that was subsequently reduced by uh, digging a ditch through the middle. So the Principia, the, the which you would normally find in the middle of the fort, ended up being right at one end of the reduced fort. Uh, and we, we can see other buildings to a certain extent. We can see some barracks and uh, so a row of anomalies on the road out of the fort to the east, which we're not entirely sure what they are, but they could be burials. So um, the reduced bit of the fort, uh, feature number eight, uh, which has been partly excavated, um, it, it, as I mentioned before, that's the, the bit in the trees. It looks like that part of the fort was used as an annex with uh, with uh, other buildings in there, um, probably more sort of administrative buildings. Canovium, we've seen already seen a photograph of this one, uh, aerial photograph. Uh, this is the um, another of another. A fort from the late AD 70s, but it appears to have been reoccupied to some extent in the 4th century. Uh, we've seen this aerial photograph before. It shows there's an awful lot going on outside the fort. Um, our geophysical survey uh, kind of reiterated this. Uh, what we've got to the north of the fort is a huge area of Vicus settlement. It's a very dense settlement. Zooming in on it, we're looking at these... Um, these dark blobs, which I mentioned before, are hearths, or it could possibly some of them could be pits, but uh, we can we can see all alongside the road, which runs up through the centre of the uh, of the slide, um, there are huge amounts of these dots, which are all hearths, and it looks like we we've probably got alongside the road there lots of different phases of uh, of um, vicus building. So we've got these. Uh, wooden buildings set end onto the road. There seem to be quite a lot of them, and they've probably burnt down or fallen down and been uh, rebuilt. So that's why we seem to have all these overlapping things. There do seem to be quite a few other buildings there. Not entirely sure what they all are, but uh, it's uh, it shows that we've got this big um, this uh, landscape around the fort. It's very important. <coughs> and very important to the running of the fort and uh, presumably a lot of archaeology under the ground there. This one appears to have some kind of a ditch around it, uh, so it could be a defended vicus, which is slightly different to the other ones we've seen. Far, uh, moving on, um, this is a, one, a site that we looked at uh, after the main project, uh, done in conjunction with the National Park, I seem to remember. This is Tom and Amir in the uplands near Trousfurnith, a very sort of remote fort. Uh, this is a, a plan of the wider, uh, what we know about it from uh, before we did the uh, before we did the work. 
So you can see there's all kinds of things. We've got practice camps, a little amphitheatre, burials, a parade ground, uh, a complete water system running into the, uh, supplying the uh, the fort. We've got roads with barrows and uh, marching camps and, and even the abutments of a Roman bridge. One that really is a Roman bridge. <laughs> Our geophysical survey was a real challenge, but myself and John Berman got through it, and it came out uh, better than I thought it would. We can see barracks in uh, on the eastern side of the uh, fort very clearly. Um, not entirely clear what's going on up on, on the uh, on the western side of the fort. There seem to be some quite anomalous buildings there, but we don't even know from our geophys whether they're definitely uh, anything to do with the Romans. They might even be to do with the Mott. Difficult to know at the moment from just from this, but uh, definitely a lot of archaeology within uh, the fort itself. Um, you, one interesting new discovery up towards the north, we can see yet, a, yet again those giveaway uh, thermo-remnant blobs on the, uh, on the geophysical survey, so it looks like we have a vicus come along the side of that road running up to, uh, to the north kind of north north um, east side of the fort quite a lot of activity down towards the bridge as well but um, you can see these big smudges of uh, dark and light um, this is the effect of the uh, underlying geology so in many in all almost all respects this was a bit of a challenging uh, geophysical survey but we can actually see there are buildings down uh, to the south east as well Um, that's most of the survey, so we've got a couple more to look at. Uh, the, the latest uh, one that came up, which wasn't really part of the uh, main project, was uh, a fortlet. Uh, now, as we discussed in the first lecture, we haven't really found much on Anglesey itself, but um, fairly recently, uh, so 1990, Mary Aris uh, took an aerial photograph of an interesting little feature uh, near Kemlin Bay and we eventually managed to follow this up. We weren't sure whether it was an Iron Age settlement or what really. But it turned out to be a perfect little Roman fortlet. It came out very clearly uh, on the survey. Um, if we zoom into it you can actually see the remains of some rectangular buildings inside and a nice uh, gateway on the north side. It's surrounded by a rather wobbly but uh, definitely there ditch, um, which, uh, so on the interpretation survey number one there, um, a bit strange, but uh, there are parallels. Uh, this is the Neronian fort at Martin Ho in Devon. And this is almost exactly the same, uh, quite remarkably similar. You know, the now outer compound around the fort that seemed to be for beacons, so for signalling. So it looks as though the, the fort uh, is to do with uh, um, the, the, the Roman fleet and looking, and, and either a lookout or a landing place or a signalling place uh, on the north coast of Anglesey. So a really nice uh, new discovery there. And the first bit of Roman archaeology from the uh, invasion period that we've uh, discovered uh, on Anglesey as far as uh, military archaeology goes. Yes, one more fort, one more fort. Uh, we dis This was at uh, Llanvor near Bala, so uh, this had been spotted uh, by St Joseph on an aerial photograph. There's something going on there. I think this is when he'd been visiting Kaya Gai at the, at the other end of Llintegid. Uh, and spotted there was something very interesting going on on the valley floor uh, on the other side of Bala. Uh, we can see a big polygonal stores compound and a corner of uh, three ditches uh, just in the, the bottom centre of this photograph. Now I'm not going to go talk about this one now, this is going to be our next lecture uh, and I'm just going to ex exclusively look at Landvor in, in that one. So. That's all we've got time for on this one, folks. Uh, so uh, see you soon, uh, and we'll look at uh, this fascinating site uh, then.